Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're going to be talking about saw etching. How do you personalize a saw just for you? Now, I don't know about you, but when I think about saw etching, I think about big expensive things such as, you know, a laser engraver to do it on steel um, or acid etching and other methods that would be very expensive or possibly even a really expensive electrical source so that you can etch it in with electricity. But what if I told you that you probably have everything you need in the shop to do acid etching on your own? I'm making a set of saws for a friend and uh, I wanted to do some etching in it or to particularly put the wood by right or his touch mark on here. And it's really a simple thing. All you need is a nine volt battery and a Q-tip and some salt water. A nine volt battery, I actually stole this connector off of something I had in junk and I put these little alligator clips onto it. You need some Q-tips and you need some water with some salt in it. How much salt really doesn't matter. I had yeah, about that much water with about two teaspoons or so of salt mixed in there. Mix it until it dissolves and you're good to go. Now, if you want a touch mark that just looks like a blob, that's all you need. You can actually draw with the Q-tip and draw out what you want. It's gonna be kind of faded and very blobbish, uh, but it would work. And if you want it to look nice and sharp, you're gonna to have to have a stencil. And that's really where the expense comes in. The actual etching of it is incredibly easy, and I'll show you that a little bit later. But making the stencil is the difficult part. I use a vinyl adhesive. It comes in rolls and sheets, and it's basically a vinyl sticker on a backing paper. And you can, with a knife, cut into this and shape out what you want. And then you can apply that sticker to your surface and you've got your stencil. I know a few other people who use nail polish. You can actually cover it in a couple coats of nail polish and then scratch off the nail polish you don't want and use that as your stencil. And you can etch into that. And the nail polish will stop the etching. So you're just etching where there is no nail polish. It actually works relatively well from what I've seen. I've never tried it myself, but there are very few houses in the world that don't have some nail polish that you could uh, suddenly make disappear. The method I chose to go with is a vinyl cutter. Uh, this is actually a really cheap one that I'm borrowing from a friend. And if you go on Facebook and you say, hey, does anyone have a vinyl cutter? You're probably gonna find four or five friends that have it. If you have a crafting friend who does likes to do things, they probably have a vinyl cutter. You can buy one of these for around 100 to 200 bucks. Um, but something simple like this, and you can stencil out really delicate and very accurate and nice working stuff. So if you have a friend with a vinyl cutter, they can grab some vinyl and print off a sticker for you. Now, I'm not exactly sure which method Jared Green uses, uh, but his are really, really nice. And you can see some of the, this one's a little bit more delicate. This one is actually laser etched in. You can tell that by the tiny, tiny, tiny little lines. Um, or it might actually be engraved with an engraving head. Um, but those require a lot of machining and very, very expensive work. If I had to guess, I would say this one is also laser done, but very, very well done. And you're gonna find etches on all kinds of saws. This is an old Atkins. Um, one of my favorite etches, they tend to not be very deep, so they tend to disappear quickly. But when you got one, uh, they're really nice to have. You can also do it with acid, which works very much the same way. You stencil it off, then you apply the acid, and then you clean off the acid, and then you remove the stencil, and you've got that on there. Uh, the acid etching, I, I, I've done it once before, and I didn't have very good results, and I just there was something about working with the acid that I didn't enjoy. The electro etching, though, this is actually really fast, really easy, and I really like this method. When it comes to laser engraving, well, you know about that if you have a laser engraver. And if you don't have a laser engraver, then it's not really an option because those are very, very expensive. Uh, and you need to be doing a lot of these to make that worth it. So usually what I'm gonna say is find a friend with a vinyl cutter and it's actually really, really quick and easy. Then you just need the nine volt and some salt water and some Q-tips and you're, you're good to go. So let me take you through doing this etch. First thing I'm gonna do is go over to the computer. And depending upon which vinyl cutter you have, there'll be different software you'll use for it. Most of them you can drag and drop a picture into it and then tell it what you want to actually turn into a cutting line. You then have to specify what cutting paper you're using, what cutting head, how deep the cut is, and many other little things like that. But once you get through all of that rigmarole, you just hit print and it cuts it out. Just like that, you have a stencil that has been cut out. Now, one thing you do need to think about is if you are going to be doing a reverse image, you need to actually flip the image first. And you can do that in anything pretty much from Microsoft Paint on up to Adobe Photoshop. But in this case, I'm doing a direct transfer, so I don't need to reverse it. So now that I have the vinyl sheets, I'm actually going to remove the lettering that I want actually etched into it. In this case, it's the A all the way around it. The problem is this has a bunch of little pieces. And if I ever take all those little pieces and try to put them on the surface, 
it wouldn't work out right and they wouldn't be balanced out right. So I want them to have the exact same spacing that they have on the paper. So to do that, I'm actually gonna get some application tape um, and, or it's called adhesive backing or something of that nature. There's, there's a bunch of different names for it. I'll leave a link to the ones I use down below. But basically what this is, is another sticker, but with very little stickum. I've also seen some people do it with the stick it note stickum. You then apply that sheet over top of the face of the sticker, remove the backing off of the sticker and now you can apply the sticker straight onto the surface and everything is spaced out exactly where you want. All those little bits and pieces stay where they're supposed to stay. Now you want to make sure you rub it in very, very well. You want to get good adhesion between the sticker and the surface. So when you peel off the backing, the sticker stays there and the backing comes off. You don't want to peel anything off. Be very, very careful when you're peeling it back. At that point, you're ready to etch. So I've got the nine volt battery. I've got the leads on it. Uh, these little couplers, you can actually buy those on Amazon. I'll leave a link to that. But most of the time you have some old electronics or something that have that in there. I actually had some dead smoke detectors that had leads in there and I could pull those off and plug them in. And I actually went to the hardware store then and bought these little alligator clips that I could crimp onto the leads. And with that, we have it ready to go. I'm clipping it onto the Q-tip here because I don't want these two leads to touch. Keeping them separated with the paper in between means that they're not gonna connect. At this point, you wanna take the positive wire, which I have a red wire on here. That's the small end of the nine volt battery. And you want to connect that to your plate. You can connect it just about anywhere on the plate as long as it has a good solid connection there. Then on the other end, I'm gonna take the alligator clip and I actually want to click the cotton head. I want it to be on the head, not up here on the shaft. I want it to make contact with the liquid. And most of the time, I'm gonna keep it pretty close to the end here. Then with the salt water mixture, I'm going to dip that in there and I want to soak the whole head. I want the mixture to be going all the way up to the tip. Wipe off a little bit of the excess and then we can set it in and you'll start to hear the hissing. At first it won't be very loud, but it will get louder and louder and louder. You want to take your time and move very, very slowly around the surface. Now the head might get warm on this. I've never had it get more than warm to the touch, in which case then just dip it in, wipe it off and do it again. It cools it right down. And I'm going to go back and forth over the area five or six times until I feel that's about right. And then I'm going to move on to the next area and do that five or six times. If the electrode ever starts to get dry, then stop, add a little bit more to it, dip it off, and go to it again. Take your time. This whole logo is going to take me about two to three minutes, maybe a little longer. I would much rather have an etch that goes in deep than have one that's not deep enough and wipes off easily. Every now and then the head starts to fall apart and yeah, that one's pretty well used. I'll grab another Q-tip, dip that, and continue on again. The nice thing about working with a nine volt battery is you really don't have any electrocution worries. It's not like trying to lightning etch a board where you could die doing that. In this case, you could lick this and it would taste salty. On the wider areas, you're gonna slow it down because they need to do a little more work. Also be careful with the clip. You don't want the back end to touch somewhere else. You may end up electro etching somewhere you don't want to electro etch. Right? When you come to corners, make sure you don't accidentally scratch up the sticker. You don't want to peel up little pieces and suddenly have that detail disappear. I think I've gotten it here, but I want to check. So I'm gonna grab a rag, very carefully wipe it off. I don't want the salt water to get on other places of the steel because it will rust the steel out. Oop, don't wipe. Whew, picked up a sticker there. I'm looking for any areas that aren't black. I wanna see black. And I've seen some spots up here that are a little more silver than others. So I gotta do a little more in that ring. I gotta do a little more up here. We're getting close. Any of those places that were a little bit more gray than black, just spend a little more time on them, trying to even it all out. Also, another word of warning, you are creating a bit of hydrogen here. So I wouldn't want to have an open flame around, but it's not that much. So let's wipe it off and see what we get. Or in this case, dab it off because those stickers are grabbing a little bit more than I would like, especially on those sharp corners. So I'm gonna put both clips back onto that so that they don't touch again. And then let's peel this backing off and see what we get. Ooh, this is the fun part right here. Ooh. Cameras don't like to focus on mirrors. Could have gone a little bit deeper over here, but not bad. Let's wipe it off. I like to grab a little denatured alcohol 
or solvent of your choice and then wipe it down. I want to make sure I get off all of the salt water because that will rust out the plate and I don't want to rust out the plate. So we're going to clean off the whole area. Make sure it's all really nice and clean. Oh, I'm liking that. And you want to see, you should be able to feel it with your fingernail. There should be a little catch on it. It's got a little bit of depth to it. On this side, I didn't wipe it off ahead of time. I just used a rag and cleaned it off. And what that ended up doing is actually spreading the salt water across the plate. And so I have this little bit of surface rust here. I got to go back and polish that down a little bit. So, oops, um, lesson learned. Make sure you fully clean it off and you'll get a really nice clean surface edge. I like how that came out. The first time I did this, I was absolutely amazed with just how simple it is. And it, they really come out very, very well. You may want to find an old saw plate to practice on a moment, but honestly, after one attempt, I was really comfortable with it, learned a few lessons, and went on with it. Um, as long as you clean off the surface and don't leave the rust on it, you're pretty good. And I really like how this one came out. I could have spent a little more time on it. It's always better to spend more time than not enough. You're not going to etch all the way through the plate unless you're there for a couple hours. So it's not something to terribly worry about. You want to get enough of an etch in there that's going to stay. And I am really, really happy with how that came out. It makes it personal. It makes it my saw. And uh, I, I just, yeah, it's, it's incredibly easy and very, very simple. And it's just a nine volt battery, a Q-tip, and some salt water. That's all you need. And uh, yeah, I would never have expected it to be that easy. So I hope you like that. Um, if you have any questions, thoughts, things I could do better, things that would work out better, other options to try, let me know those down below. Um, honestly, I've only done this uh, about a half dozen times and I, I'm, I'm in love with it. It's one of those things I'm thinking about going back and acid etching a few other things in the shop. It's kind of like branding. I could do it on most any metal surface and it's kind of exciting. Uh, but yeah, it actually works out really, really well. I look forward to seeing your questions, thoughts, snide remarks, and other comments down below that it does help out the channel. Thank you for that. Anytime you throw a comment down below or you hit the like, the share, those things do help out the channel. Thank you. Honestly, um, they help us get in front of more people. They help the channel grow and they help that almighty algorithm. So if you'd like to do that, you can. Otherwise, you can take it one step farther. There's a bunch of names over there. They're all the patrons on Patreon. Without patrons on the channel, uh, we wouldn't exist. Or without members, we wouldn't exist either. We are completely sponsored by you, the viewer. Members here on YouTube, patrons on Patreon. Um, we, uh, well, you keep the lights on. <laughs> so thank you. If you'd like to find out more, there's links to Patreon down below, or you can click the little join button and become a member here. I think I'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Knock, knock. Who's there? Saw etch. Saw etch you. Well, there's no reason to sneeze at me. <laughs>